Hello, everybody. I'm August, as you know. Um, I'm presenting on electronic nose odor classification using a long, short-term memory neural network. And that may seem like a lot of jargon right now, but we will dive into it. And hopefully by the end, you'll understand what this exactly means. So just giving you an outline of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I'll start with opening, which is the background a little bit, motivation, why this research is necessary, um, things that have already been done um, on this topic. I'll transition to the background, which is additional information about the research, um, how we're going to be taking a slightly different approach than what has been done previously. I'll then move on to our research design, which includes um, exactly how we're going to be determining the accuracy of our classification system compared to other systems. Um, we'll move to schedule and deliverables, and then conclusion and questions. So in the news, you see all of this interesting, cool stuff concerning self-driving cars or face recognition or even uh, generating image descriptions just based on feeding an image to some API. Um, now, how do all of these things work, right? They have two things in common that we want to focus on today. And those two things are machine learning and that there are tasks that all humans do. So for example, self-driving cars, they have to take into account all of the vision aspects of things going on around them. Uh, face recognition does vision as well. You have voice recognition, which is um, you say, okay, Google, uh, what is the square root of two? And speech generation, Google will generate some speech to respond to you. Um, so all of these things are very human abilities being emulated by a machine. Um, but there's another human ability that isn't so much in the news these days, and why is that? It's, it's vital to a lot of the things that we do. And that's the ability to smell. So when you smell something, uh, it could be detection of food, like, oh, I smell pizza. I'm gonna go grab some pizza, and that's vital to my survival. Uh, it could detect potentially dangerous environments. If you smell gasoline, and you have a match in your hand, you're not gonna wanna light that match and cause an explosion. Um, as for health conditions, there's some new research um, about this um, using different machine learning techniques to detect um, odors emitted by the skin, to detect, say, like organ failure, things like that, and that's super interesting. Uh, but less often do we hear about this news, and that's exactly what this research um, is targeting. So how do we improve um, the techniques to do this, and where can we go with it? So diving right into that topic, uh, this research proposes um, a new technique to classify odors detected by a gas sensor array. The gas sensor array is what we call an electronic nose, and that emulates the functionality of a human nose or an animal nose. And we will be using a recurrent neural network, which is an RNN. Um, specific type of RNN is an LSTM, which is a long short-term memory neural network. Um, and our hypothesis here is that using this LSTM neural network, we can improve the classification accuracy of the time series odor data. Um, and I see some confused looks, so let me give a little bit of background on an LSTM neural network. Um, so, so you have this gas sensor array, and over a period, say, of five seconds, you read in samples from the air around you. Um, and what that data does, it's, it's basically uh, like resistance values from these gas sensors. And classification will say, okay, what is this odor? And tell you, okay, this is coffee or this is something else. Um, neural networks have been applied here, but LSTM ne neural networks have not, and these have particular strengths for time series data. So a bit of background on this. Uh, Jing and Meng have done some research in 2016 um, using a, an artificial neural network to classify odor data. They were able to achieve 96.25% accuracy, but the neural network that they used was not an LSTM neural network. So they had some downfalls to the way that they had to process their data. For example, uh, they had to squash their time series data into a huge input layer. So instead of feeding in um, segment by segment, they had to just feed it in all at once. And you definitely lose some, um, 
some features of that data by doing so. So an LSTM neural network overcomes this because it has memory. So this is just an example of like a very basic neural network. Uh, it's not particular to recurrent neural networks, but the uh, what a recurrent neural network actually has is connections back to itself um, for the hidden layers. And that's where the memory comes from. Um, as for the output layer, that's our classification labels. So I'll give examples of different odors that we will be classifying, um, but that'll be coffee or cheese or something like that. So just a bit of background on what the E-Node system consists of. We have gas sensors. Um, these are relatively cheap. They come in all types and varieties. Um, what these What these do, uh, they basically sense different chemicals or, or things that are in the atmosphere. And then you can hook that up to what this is, which is an Arduino. This is also pretty pretty cheap. And then we can connect that to a computer. So the Arduino interfaces with the gas sensors directly, reads in the resistance values from them. And then we can ship that data off to the PC for further processing. So uh, the research design that we have proposed is uh, it consists of four main components. Um, actually building the e-node system is the main uh, the data collection system is the e-nodes. Um, actually sampling different odors um, multiple times in different environments, things of that nature. We'll analyze that data that we've collected, make sure that it's consistent, there's no anomalies, sensors are working properly, and then we'll actually train, build, classify all of these different odors. So building the e -nose. this will consist of an Arduino and it's about $50. Um, that interfaces with 14 different gas sensors, two of each type. We have a table here of the various sensors that we will be using. Um, each of them, they're sensitive to different um, chemicals and materials and things like that. This is actually based on previous research. So in Heredia here, they, uh, they use the same sensor array and they were able to achieve pretty good classification accuracy on some of these test coders. Once we gather that data with the ENOS, we ship off the data from the Arduino over to the PC for further processing. And the cost of this is pretty cheap compared to other research. Um, one particular paper was using um, a very expensive National Instruments data acquisition system, which ranges from like three to five thousand dollars. So overall cost of this system is three, less than three hundred dollars. Okay, so we built our enos. Now we got to collect our data. So this is essentially building our training set for the neural network. Uh, we have six different odors here that propose to train this on, to give samples to, to expose to the enos. Uh, bleach, oranges, cheese, coffee, smoke, perfume. Um, these, yeah, as mentioned previously, were odors that were used in other research, so uh, they have very distinct signatures. And additionally, classifying smoke was done in the earlier research. Um, I believe the LSTM ne ne neural network will do a great job doing that as well. Um, in addition to the six different odors that we expose, we also expose no odor, which is a baseline. And the reason that we do that is we can compare, or we can subtract out the baseline from the, say, orange smell, and that should give us just what the sensor readings were for the oranges. Um, after we collect all of that data, then we will assign manual labels um, and essentially have our training set. So to make sure that this data is reliable and generalizable, we'll make sure to do this across multiple days, different weather conditions. Um, hopefully have about 500 samples of each odor in addition to the baseline. Um, and yes. Okay. Step three, uh, we built our enos, we've collected data, and now we have to analyze it. So. Samples of the same odor should be generally consistent across different conditions. Um, we want to make sure that 
that different sensors are reacting to uh, different odors, make sure that the sensor array is working properly. Uh, we will compare samples of different odors to each other to see if there's any similarity between them, which, which gas sensors react to what. And that will be done by calculating cor correlation across samples. Um, what we hope to see is consistent results in gathering this data. There's no um, erroneous data, say from a broken gas sensor. Uh, there's no uh, an anomalies or like strange spikes in, in samples, things of that nature. Finally, so we built our ENOS, we've gathered a bunch of data on odor, we've then analyzed that data, now we actually have to build our neural network and we have to run the classification process. Um, so by using five-fold cross-validation, which is basically taking a random sampling <clears throat> of these 3,500 samples that we've collected, we can verify that no matter what combination of training and test data that we use, um, the neural network will classify accurately. The measures that we have chosen to use, which is similar to previous work, um, accuracy, overall, precision recall, F1 score. Um, these are pretty um, well-known like classification accuracy measures. Um, as for parameter selection, so the LSTM neural network can have um, multiple hidden layers. You can train it on a number of different samples to see how well it will actually generalize, and as well as um, how many nodes are in each layer. So by using a grid search approach, we hope to experiment with that and find optimal results. As for the schedule, um, plan to take about six months with this project. Month one is used to build the ENOS, so we'll gather the Arduino, all the gas sensors, uh, make sure that they all work, connect that all up, to get that communicating with the PC. Month two, we'll collect samples. So that's um, about 500 samples, different locations over the course of the month. Excuse me. Uh, month three, we'll analyze samples collected from the emails. That's the data analysis process. Uh, month four, we'll build and train the LSTM neural network, uh, tweak the parameters from the grid search. Uh, that process might take a little long. Uh, this neural network can run on um, pretty standard hardware. So again, it goes back into the affordable aspect. And then month six, we'll write up the results. Uh, as for deliverables from this, we'll have a working ENOS um, data collection system. So this can be used in further research. We can try different types of neural networks, different types of classification uh, systems, see how well those perform. We'll have an LSTM neural network to classify odors trained on this data collected here. Um, and that has the potential to um, continue on classifying time series odor data um, to detect maybe harmful substances or fresh food over time. So to conclude, we expect to see that the uh, LSTM neural network uh, does a great job classifying this time series odor data. Uh, it has never been applied to this particular project. Um, in addition, the parts are cheap for the Arduino as well as gas sensors. So um, it's pretty easy to go and replicate this. You can train this on your home computer, for example. And then who knows, maybe one day we'll emulate the entire human sensory system, maybe a robot level. So. Thank you. Any questions? And uh, thank you. Um, Slide 12, I think. This one? Yeah. What is spam versus not spam? Oh, that's just an example of a confusion matrix, okay. which is what we use to generate all of these accuracy measures. So, for example, yeah, overall accuracy is just correct divided by your total number of samples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Uh, I think the time consuming step in, your, in this research would be the determining the features of order. Right. Uh, so I think, uh, did you consider this step in your uh, research step? The uh, feature selection? Feature selection, yeah. Um, so it, it needs, uh, I think it needs the domain knowledge and uh, you, uh, I think it's a definitely. very hard step to... Definitely. 
Um, other research that I've looked at um, basically used the raw sensor data to do classification. So that's why I was all, I'm also taking a similar approach here. Oh, okay. um, because I guess what are the features could you use, right? Because we have these sensors that are particularly sensitive to different odors or like different samples in the air. So that's basically all the data we have to use. Um, previous research had to do some like pre-processing on that, but thanks to neural networks, we don't have to do that step anymore. So we can train it directly on this and then classify. So, good question. Uh, maybe this kind of application of this method, uh, uh, solution, mm -hmm. perfect application. Uh, uh, did you say application? Yeah, yeah. How can you? Oh, yeah. Um, so there's some uh, future work, exactly. Um, so you can do real-time odor detection, right? Um, for example, harmful substances, right? If, if you're in like a, a factory environment and you detect some dangerous mixture of two odors, you can send an alarm and, you know, eventually get people out of the building, something like that. Or, or for example, back here, uh, health conditions, right? Um, there's been research on odor detection from just human skin, mm -hmm. so who knows where that could go, right? If, if you can detect different things from just odors um, emitted by humans, things like that. So just out of one solution is maybe smart home. Right? Smart home? Smart home you can sense what the owners are doing, the cooking. Oh yeah, definitely. Like some of the cleaning. Mm -hmm. So you have this uh, no smell baseline, right? Right. How can you make sure it's a uh, no smell baseline? I mean, how can you make sure? Well, it's you actually... It's not smell even if you... Right, right. Even. It's it's not so much a no smell baseline, it's just the ambient air in the room. Um, so that, yeah, that baseline will be specific to the other odors collected in that room, right? So that would be, that is a pre-processing step, right? We have to subtract that uh, no odor from the odors that we've collected during that particular sample. But then you may have to make sure that everything's collected in the same environment, right? You're saying uh, between samples? Right, because your nose smell baseline might be different in this room than, let's say, uh, you know, some other room upstairs. That's very true. Definitely a consideration that I need to continue research on. One more question. So okay. that issue. Like, if I expose one smell, that could contaminate the right. next. So there are some, uh, I didn't describe them here, but there's some ways to kind of contain the smell, right? You have like an enclosure that you place around the um, gas array, and that could be a potential way to 